In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create the pin uh, that's part of the Clevis project. So you've already uh, created, hopefully, the Clevis uh, working to these dimensions. And you've also, sorry about that, my mouse is moving a little too much. Uh, you've also created uh, the pin and the lever. But for those of you that have had any difficulty creating the pin, I'll show you how to do that. And the concepts really are similar for the lever. So to begin with, I'm going to create a new part file in Inventor. I'm going to make sure that it's English units. I'm going to go to standard IPT. And it's opening now. So what we're really going to need to do is to create a circle and extrude it to create the pin. And then we need to create a slot for the key. So to begin with, again, I start off with a sketch. Notice that I've got my feature tree over here. I've got the ribbons along the top, and I'm going to go first to create a sketch. So I click on create a sketch, and then I want to create a 2D sketch. And then I'm going to select to create it on the XY plane, which is this one here. So I'm going to click on the XY plane, and now it'll turn to the front view of the XY plane. And there we go. Now we're in sketch mode. Notice that the ribbon along the top. Uh, will have changed. My computer is working rather slowly here this morning. So here's my ribbon. I can uh, create shapes, lines, and so on. I've got dimensioning. I've got constraints in here that can be used. Move, trim, etc. Uh, all sorts of things along the, the top here that you should become familiar with. So to begin with, we're going to uh, create a, a circle. So I go to the circle command. I'm going to start it at the origin and I can just draw it out and then dimension it afterwards, or if I know the dimension, and I do, it is a radius of 2, so that means it's a diameter of 4. So I'm going to type in, this is now looking for the diameter, I'm just going to type in 4 and enter. Otherwise, I could have just drawn a circle and then used the dimension command to dimension it afterwards. And there's my circle. So now that's really all that I need to, to do to create the, uh, the cylinder. So I'm going to say finish sketch. And I'm going to zoom out again using the roller ball on the mouse. All right, so now we've got our uh, circle that's ready to be extruded. One of the things I like to do, though, at the very beginning is to make sure that I've saved the file. So I'm going to go up to the application menu and go to save as. And I'll call this one. I've already got a pin. Uh, Part file, so I'm going to call this pin again. And I'll say save. Make sure that it goes into your Clevis folder. Again, if you don't have a Clevis folder, make sure you've made one and that all your parts go into there. And then your assembly files will go in there and your drawing file and so on. I'm going to say save. Now notice that the file name has changed up in the top, and it's also changed over here in the part name. So now I can carry on. I'm going to extrude. So I've got my sketch one here. I can click on it. And since it's the only sketch, I won't need to click on it. If, it was, if there was more than one, I should click on it in the uh, tree, or I'll have to go and select the surface afterwards. But it has taken that sketch as the profile, and so it's selected that. And now it's trying to show me what the extrusion will look like. So I want this to be file here, and I want it to be 12 inches long. So now I type in 12 for the distance. And it's going to be better in uh, for what I'm doing later to have this be a symmetric extrusion. That means it's going to extrude 6 inches on either side of the origin XY plane. Uh, I could do it. Uh, going from one end or the other end, but uh, and I know that later on I'm going to want to be able to use the midpoint, and so that's going to be better uh, for me right off the bat. I can always make changes to things later, so it's not too, too critical, but I'm going to use symmetric. I'm going to say OK. And now I've got my part. I like to go and give the part uh, a material, so I'm going to go up to Tools. So I clicked on the part up here. I go to Tools, click on Appearance. And now I'll go and find the uh, material that I want to use. 
I can just scroll through here and find any of them. I'm going to use green polished for now. So what I do now is I double click on it. And that adds the material into the file. It hasn't actually made it, uh, hasn't applied it to the part yet. If I only wanted uh, particular faces of the part to be colored, I could select that and then select the color and or the material. And notice that now just that face is done. However, I want the whole thing. So I could either in the window, draw a window, uh, sorry, in the drawing area, draw a window around the entire part. Or even easier is just to go I'll open up my uh, appearance window again, go to the uh, tree, click on the part that I want, and now it's going to select the entire thing. And now I can select the material, and now the entire part has that material. Then I can just close the window, and now my part looks good. So now what I need to do is I need to put in the notch for the key. So I'm going to go back to my drawings here and notice this notch. Well, the best way to do this, when I do an extrusion, I'm, I'm actually going to do an extrusion cut. I'm going to cut out this piece. But the, uh, when I do that, I have to have an enclosed area. I can't draw a three-sided uh, section and extrude cut that. So the best way to do this is just create a rectangle and uh, extrude, uh, extrude cut it. And since I know that the uh, rectangle should be the same dimensions as the key, what's going to happen is I'm going to draw really the key, extrude it, cut it, and it's going to be more than I need to cut out of this part because the upper part will also be cut out. But that's no problem. It's just cutting it out of empty space. Then I'll do the exact same thing when I do the lever. I'll create the, uh, I'll create the shape, then I'll create the hole, and then I'll create a rectangle and I'll extrude cut the well I'll extrude cut the hole and then I'll do a separate sketch for the rectangle. I'll do the exact same one as I'm going to do now on the shaft and I'll extrude cut it and I'll have the upper part of the rectangle here that uh, for the notch for the key to fit into. So going back to uh, the key, the key is five eighths inch by one and a half inch tall and it's three quarters of an inch deep. So here I've asked for uh, 5 eighths inch by 3 quarter inch deep. DP stands for deep, so that means this depth is going to be 3 quarters of an inch. And I want it to be 1 and an eighth inch up. So I'm going to go to uh, my part file and I need to create a new part, or sorry, a new sketch. So I go back to the 3D model tab, create a sketch. And now I need to, it doesn't look like anything's happened, but I need to select the surface that I'm going to do my sketch on. So I click this front uh, surface that's where I can see the profile that I want to create. Now the best thing is just to create a rectangle and I'm just going to draw it coming out. Oops. And so to begin with I want it to be that's giving me in the x direction so I'm going to type in 5 8 and then I'm going to hit the tab key and that allows me to get the y direction. So that was one space one slash two for one and a half or 1.5 and then hit enter. And so now I've got the rectangle, but now I need to locate it properly. So if I take a look at my diagram, it says that it's one and an eighth inch from this corner to the origin. And then the notch is centered on the origin as well. So I'm gonna go back to the part and I'm gonna use the dimension command. So I click on dimension and I'm gonna click on the corner point. Then I wanna go down to the origin and draw out my dimension. Click on it and type in one base one slash eight or 1.125 and now hit enter or click on the check mark and now I've got this located uh, vertically the way I want now I need to uh, get it located horizontally so I could use a dimension and go from the midpoint here or uh, from an edge there are lots of different ways to do this however I'd, I'd rather use a constraint so I'm going to go here to the vertical constraint click on it and I know that I want the midpoint of this line be lined up vertically with the origin. So I'm going to click on the origin and now notice that it's moved over and now it's fully constrained. Okay. You may have noticed that sometimes the lines are green and sometimes the lines are blue. When when an object, a line or, or the entire uh, rectangle is constrained, it's blue. And when it's, or when it's fully constrained, it's blue. And when it's partially constrained or not constrained, it's green. 
So I have completely constrained this rectangle now. I can't make any other changes to it without, without either deleting a dimension or deleting a, a constraint because I've set the, the length, the width, and I've set its starting location both in the X and the Y direction. So it's fully constrained, so now the lines have turned blue. So now I'm going to say finish sketch. And now I can do an extrude. Notice that I hadn't selected the sketch down here. It would have been a good idea to, and then that would be the profile. But I can zoom in and select the profile I want to extrude. So I want this profile of the sketch that I just created. Now it's trying to extrude it. I want an extrude cut. And sometimes I'll do through all, but that would give me a notch going all the way through the shaft. That's not what I want. So I'm going to say distance, and I want it to be three quarters of an inch deep. So I'm going to type in three slash four. And uh, uh, right now it's going in the correct direction. If I needed to change it, I could, but I want it to go the direction that it's doing right now and say OK. And now I've got a notch. I need another one on the other side. I could do the exact same thing by creating a sketch and selecting the surface over at this end and then doing my sketch and extrude. However, I can speed things up by clicking on the extrusion here. That is the, uh, so extrusion two is the extrude cut. Remember that extrusion one was really the pin itself. So I'm going to click on extrusion two. This is why I say it's so important to get to know uh, and pay attention to using the, the tree over here. It can save you a lot of time and allow you to, to figure out what's where and if you need to make changes, whether or not you need to edit the sketch or, or edit the extrusion. If I right click on extrusion, I can edit either the sketch or the feature. I can delete the extrusion. I can do all sorts of things in here. I can suppress it. Uh, if I suppress the features, right, it's as if it's not there, but it is still there. I can go back at any time and unsuppress it, and it's right back again. So very useful to, to use this tree. I'm going to click on the extrusion over in the tree, and I need another notch on the other end. So I'm going to use the mirror command which is right here under Pattern. If I click on uh, Mirror, I've already selected the uh, extrusion because I had pre-selected uh, it over here. If not, then I would need to uh, click on Features and select the feature that I want. Now I need to select the Mirror Plane. So I click on Mirror Plane, and I want to use the mid plane of the pin as my mirror plane. I want it to flip it about the middle of the, of the pin. So I'm going to go up to the origin of the pin, and I'm going to go through here. My XY plane is perfect. It's right in the middle of the, of the pin. So I can click on that and use that as my mirror plane. Notice that it shows me uh, over here what it's going to create, and that's exactly what I want. So I can say OK, and now I've got the pin uh, generated. And that's really all that there is to uh, creating the pin. I need to make sure that I go back and save. And uh, when you go to do the, uh, the lever now, you're going to use the same concepts. You're going to extrude a rectangle to create the main shape, then create another sketch uh, for the circle or for the hole and extrude cut it, and then create a third sketch, and that will be uh, for the uh, for the notch and do the same rectangle, the exact same rectangle and locate it based on these dimensions and then uh, do an extrude cut on it as well. Okay, And then uh, obviously you also need to make the, uh, the pin or the key, which is going to be uh, hopefully uh, very simple for you at this stage. And so that's creating the pin. Hopefully this tutorial uh, uh, helps you out and, uh, and you can complete uh, all of the parts now.